Welcome back to Joe's Computer Museum. Today we're taking a look at the Ultra Warp Accelerator for the Apple II. Warm up the CRT, it's time for another episode. The Ultra Warp is a custom designed accelerator for Apple II, Apple II Plus, and Apple IIe computers. Designed by Michael Mengel, it's currently distributed by Reactive Micro. It can accelerate your Apple II up to whatever speed you can manage to make it stable, usually around 13 MHz. So how do these accelerators work? Well, I've created an entire video on that, so check out the card or the link in the description. The Ultra Warp has a 14 MHz rated 65C816 processor, allowing the use of the extended instruction set for better performance, so clever programmers could squeeze even more performance out of an Apple II if they wanted to. This card uses the RAM approach, so it has 128K of onboard RAM that runs at full speed. The card must be installed in slot 0 of the Apple II and Apple II Plus, but works in any slot in the Apple IIe, including slot 3, finally giving you a use for that normally unusable slot. It has several settings changeable by dip switches. You can change if it accelerates slot 5 and 7, with slot 6 always slowed down, since that's where most people put the classic Disk 2 card. You can also tell it how to handle the paddles, since they require original timing to return accurate results. With the replaceable oscillator, you can customize the speed pretty much however you want. The card does use DMA and is not compatible with other DMA-capable cards, so beware. Like all Apple II accelerators, the use case for the Ultra Warp is somewhat limited. The Apple II's original speed is fast enough for what it was designed to do, but when dealing with graphics programs, full-screen GUI, or office applications, more speed means more productivity and less waiting. What usually doesn't benefit is games. Acceleration pretty much makes them unplayable. And now for the fun part. Let's see what the Ultra Warp can do. I had some problems with the card. Most things run at 13 MHz, but I had a couple of glitches among hundreds of tests. What usually fails at 13 MHz is diagnostic RAM tests. At 12 MHz, I had no usage issues and very rarely RAM test failure. At all lower speeds, everything was fine. Now, be careful when installing your card. I destroyed my test unit when the oscillator can shorted against my mouse card. I had to send it back to have it repaired. I tried several things to resolve the problems I was having, including reseeding all the chips on the card, reseeding all my cards, removing all my other cards, trying it in a different Apple, and using more than one diagnostic program. None of these things improved operation at 13 MHz, including sending the unit back to Reactive Micro for evaluation. Final thoughts? Overall, the design is solid, the product has value, and it's worth a look. I do have some concerns, though. Configuration is only by dip switches, and you can only choose speeds of certain slots, not all of them. The card uses DMA at all times, and this cannot be turned off. So beware when using with other cards that use DMA, like a MicroDrive Turbo. The speed is locked to the crystal that you install in it, so there's no on-the-fly speed changes or turning on or off the accelerator. 
I was unable to get fully reliable operation at the advertised 13 megahertz. This may just be my test card, but anecdotal evidence indicates others have had similar problems. It is possible to correct these issues. Some folks in the community were able to fix this by swapping out logic chips, RAM, or the CPU. But I believe that a product should work out of the box in all scenarios at the advertised specifications. This gives me a little bit of concern about the manufacturing process of the reactive micro branded boards. Your mileage may vary. Well, that's all for today's video. While you're here, check out some other videos and remember, 8 bits are all you need. I bit my lip.